You're listening to a message from Gateway Church Geelong. We hope it blesses you. For more information about Gateway, visit gc.org.au. All the books of the Bible are great. And that includes Proverbs 4.23. From the New King James Version, it says this. Oh, if you're taking notes too, the title of my sermon is Guarding Something of Worth. Proverbs 4.23 says this, Keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it spring the issues of life. Another translation says it like this, Guard your heart above all else, for it determines the course of your life. And join them two together, I've put it like this, Above all else, guard your heart, for it is the wellspring of life. This morning, let's just stand in God's presence and I just want us to pray as we come around His Word. Lord God, we just pray this morning and I just declare over every heart in this place that we are open and we are response, we're going to respond to what Your Word is saying to us this morning. Lord God, Your truth that comes forth, we just declare an open and responsive heart so that we will hear what You're wanting to say to us this morning. And we declare right now that Your presence, Your glory and who You are is with us because You love us so much. And we thank You for Your Word in the Name of Jesus. Amen. You know, the Bible actually has a lot to say about the heart. In fact, it's almost just over 900, or if you like to see it this way, just under a thousand scriptures are focused or mentions the heart. So let's just look at some of those scriptures. 1 Samuel, it's all right, not going to look at all thousand. Do it. Well, that's, that's, that's our five hours of training for the children. Are you prepared, parents? 1 Samuel 16, 7 says this. These are all from the New King James Version. But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not look at his appearance or at the height of his stature, because I have refused him. For the Lord does not see man as man sees man. Uh, For man looks at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. Psalm 28, 7 says this. The Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart trusted in him and I am helped. Therefore, my heart greatly rejoices, and with my song, I will praise him. Psalm 119.11 says this, Your word have I hidden in my heart, that I might not sin against you. Matthew 15.18, But these, those things which proceed out of the mouth come from the heart, and they defile a man. And Luke 12.34 says this, For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. You know, the Lord looks at our hearts, which is why He tells us to guard it. So what does it mean to guard our heart this morning? It means to watch over and protect it. And it means to keep it safe from harm or danger. You know, in the natural, if something is wrong with our hearts, we go to the doctors and we get a, get a checkup or find out what's going on and we get instructions from the doctor and hopefully we follow what the doctor says pertain to our heart because it's such a vital organ for in, our, in our bodies and we obviously want to keep it very health, uh, healthy. You know, likewise, we need to also protect our hearts. And if if something isn't right, we can go to God and go to His Word for help and instructions on what to do. You know, it's very easy for us as people to fake it with other people to say, yes, I'm all right, everything's going okay. But like we saw in 1 Samuel, God looks at our inner inner man. He is concerned with what's going on on the inside of us. So other people might, we can perhaps, you know, say, yeah, I'm okay. Everything's going well. And it may very well be. But God is so, loves you so much and is so concerned with who you are and and what he wants, what he's called you to be, that he wants your inner man, your heart to be healthy. So why should we guard our hearts this morning? Number one, I'm going to look at a couple of things just to tell you too, there was so much information on the heart, but I'm going to try and narrow it down for you. So please bear with me and run with me. So the first one is because it's extremely valuable. You know, I don't know what your bin night is, but Monday night's our bin night. So on Monday nights, we put the bin we put the bin out and then the three of us that live in the house, we all take turns and having two hour shifts to guard our bin to the next morning to make sure it's safe. Do any of you guys do that? Do you actually think we really do that? Why don't we do that? Because garbage, rubbish is worthless. 
We don't guard things that are worthless. But God has called us to guard our hearts because it is of such extreme value. It is important to us. So no, we don't do to our shifts for our rubbish. But guarding our hearts is of so is of such value. You know, your heart is the essence of who you are. It is the real you, the authentic you, and is the core of your being. It's what makes you, you this morning. It's where your desires, it's where your passions, it's where your, all those things that are in you, that's in your heart. It's where they live. And it's the part of you that connects with God and connects with people. It's our actions and our emotions all proceed from the heart. That's why Solomon encourages us above all else, above all else, guard your heart. Not when you feel like it, not, oh gee, you know, maybe that's a good suggestion, but he encourages us to make it a priority in our lives, to guard our hearts. And not only that, he doesn't tell you, he doesn't tell you to ask your neighbour to guard your heart. He doesn't ask you to ask your spouse to guard your heart. He says for you to guard your own heart. Because God wants you to be who He's called you to be. Those things that are in you, He wants them to come out. But He wants them to be healthy and that's why He calls us to guard them. Because it's of value. Secondly, why guard our heart? Because your heart is the source of everything that you do. Solomon said it is the wellspring of life. In other words, it's the source of everything in your life. Out of, out of your heart overflows into your thoughts, your words, your actions, your deeds, your attitudes, your beliefs and your emotions. In Luke 6.45 in the New King James it says this, A good man out of the good treasure of his heart brings forth good, and an evil man out of the evil treasure of his heart brings forth evil. For out of the abundance of the heart his mouth speaks. It is the wellspring of life. You know, what is in your heart does come out. Just as an example, and this is obviously just a, uh, hopefully a funny example, but one thing that I'm passionate about in my heart is that when you see a sign that says 80 on the road, that you actually go 80 so that the people behind you can all go 80 too. I'm very passionate about going the speed limit. Not going over, but just going the speed limit at least. So last night I'm driving along. We'd been to the beach, driving along the Bellarine, and it's 100. Oh, I love being able to go the speed limit, especially when it's 100. So there I am driving along, and then all these cars are coming out of Adventure Park. Oh, bless them. They've had a good day, I can tell. But then suddenly the car in front of me starts going only 80. (sighs) Bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his hole. Anyway, I'm driving along and I'm trying not to get frustrated because it's passionate within me. Even you ask my sister, I'm very passionate about going the speed limit and I'm trying not to get upset by this. And then you tell yourself, oh, you know, it's okay. You know, you've got to just run with it. So I tried to calm myself down, but then I can see other cars behind me who are obviously trying to bank up. I'm thinking, don't let them think it's me. I'd rather be going 100. So eventually I sort of gently just flick my lights and, you know, (laughs) and uh, then we got to the stoplights and we're side by side. And unfortunately, I will confess, I did an ungodly thing. I turned to him and I said, what did I say? You were very frustrating. And then I turned off to go to (laughs) Coles. So that is just an example, and I know it's not a good one, I did repent afterwards, but that is an example of what is in your heart does eventually come out. And yes, I am passionate about speaking, sticking to the speed limit, but there are times where it's not really appropriate. You know, a wellspring is a source of continual or abundant supply. So God wants our heart to be a continual supply of words of life and encouragement, not mine, that was terrible, of faith and of truth. Our actions and pursuits and desires need to be led by the Holy Spirit and our emotions are to be healthy and balanced. That's God's desire and plan for each one of us. You know, in Tennessee, they have thousands and thousands of natural springs where water flows to the surface of the earth from deep under the ground. It then accumulates in pools or runs off into creeks and streams. You know, if you plug up the stream, you stop the flow of water. 
If you poison the water, the flow becomes toxic. In either situation, you threaten life downstream. Everything depends on the condition of that spring. You know, when we were children, we lived near a creek and we would spend hours down there playing, looking for yabbies and frogs and tadpoles. But as you began to walk closer to the creek, you could always tell the condition of the water. If it was flowing, it didn't smell. But when it was stagnant, oh my goodness, did the creek really smell? And you could smell it from a distance. And that's why God is wanting us, that wellspring of life that He's given us, to be free and flowing and healthy. You know, if your heart is healthy this morning, it has the potential to impact every aspect of your life, including those around you, like your family and friends. Likewise, if your heart is unhealthy, it too has the, uh, the potential to impact everything. Therefore, it is imperative this morning that we guard our hearts. Number three, why guard our hearts? Because your heart is under attack. You know, we live in a real world where a lot can happen to us on a daily basis and that's why we need to guard our hearts. You know, the condition of our hearts depends on what we allow in this morning. You know, just look at the accessibility we have these days with our phones and our computers. There's so much stuff that we can access and look at. And I'm not even just talking about now the obvious things like uh, pornography and things like that. There's just so much other stuff that we can see on our computers and on our phones on a daily basis. You know, there's criticism, there's gossip, there's always someone tearing someone else down. And the more that we just allow those things to be looked at and watched and read, the more that we can begin to sometimes think, you know, is this just the norm? And before you know it, you may be saying those same things. You may be doing those same things. And that's why God wants us so diligently to guard our hearts because it is the wellspring of life. And what is in you will come out. Guard our hearts. You know, the other thing is we also have an enemy that uses all types of weapons to try and attack us. There's, he uses circumstances so that we can be led down the path of discouragement or disappointment. He uses other people that may say things to us that may, uh, you know, cause us to get hurt uh, in a way that we weren't expecting. So, you know, how this morning can we guard our hearts? You know, we, might, we won't be immune to the things that are around us because we live in the real world, but we certainly can be proactive and choose to put in wise practices into our lives to help guard our hearts. And as we know, what's in our heart does come out. So one thing that we can do is we can be, by being careful, what we allow in, obviously. What we hear, what we watch and what we see. We need to guard our hearts against criticism and gossip and negativity. You know, we would all know, I'm sure, that our flesh loves gossip and criticism. Did you hear what happened to so-and-so? And oh my God, did you see what she was wearing? That's why it's so important to guard our hearts so those things don't come out in us. Another thing is we need to choose safe people who to learn and glean from. And as we know, iron sharpens iron. Being honest with ourselves. If there is something that needs to be dealt with, ask the Holy Spirit to lead you and guide you. And above all else, seek God and, and seek His truth this morning. In other words, this morning we need to minimise the rubbish that we have around us in everyday life. We need to minimise the rubbish that could potentially come into our hearts and our lives. You know, at school where I work, I, the courtyard area outside um, our rooms often gets rubbish in there r quite regularly. And so often we're getting the kids to go around and pick up rubbish and they get a little reward for that. But it needs to be cleaned regularly. Otherwise, before you know it, it's just littered with rubbish. And that's the same with our lives. If there's things around us, God is saying, you know, minimise the rubbish that could potentially come in to your life and in your area and your severe of, uh, of influence. God is saying, minimise that rubbish. Get rid of it if you need to. Be honest with yourself this morning and allow the Holy Spirit to lead you and guide you. You know, physically, your heart, is what keeps you alive. It pumps blood through your arteries, your veins and your capillaries. It brings life-giving nutrients to every cell and fibre of your being. Your body can survive without many important organs, but it can't survive without the heart. You know, and as a person, this is exciting, as a person, you pump life, possibility, passion, love and joy into the others around you, to your job and to your function in the life of this church. 
You know, parents, you pump life, affection, acceptance, love, possibilities, dreams, hopes into your children, into your partner, into your families and your marriages. That's why it's so important to guard your heart so goodness can flow out of it. It's important so our hearts don't become injured and it's important so our hearts remain open and free. You know, guarding your heart doesn't mean being closed off to people or God. It doesn't mean unhealthy self-protection. But it does mean choosing what you have in and out of your life so that you minimise the rubbish and that your heart is guarded. You know, it means being healthy in our emotions, in our decisions, in our responses, in our passions and in our desires of who we are and what God has called us to be. It means being prosperous and living life how God called you to be. Now, this morning I just want to look at, these aren't um, a conclusive list uh, or inclusive list, but I want to look at open versus closed heart. So if, it's, so if it's got the, yeah, so the first indicators of your heart being open, healthy could be things like this. You connect to people. You talk to people. You are present and accessible. You offer help and are willing to give suggestions. You are affirming and encouraging. You may focus on what is missing, but not what is wrong. And others respond to you if you've got an open and healthy heart. Open and healthy heart, being connected and responsive and open to the people around you. You may not be perfect in all those areas, but you're working at it. And you are open to the guiding and the leading of the Holy Spirit. You know, the flip side, if our hearts are injured and closed, is that we can struggle to connect with people. We can become distant and aloof and choose to avoid situations and people. Our communication shuts down. We become critical and demanding and we can leave people to fend for themselves. Which would you rather be this morning? The healthy and open heart that is open and responsive to people around you and open and responsive to God this morning. Let's choose to be people who guard our hearts and have open and healthy hearts. You know, and the good news is with our God this morning is that he doesn't just dump everything in your lap and say, okay, now I'll leave you to it. You need to deal with all this. No, he takes you on a journey of, and and it's a progressive journey so that you can see wholeness and and healthiness and breakthrough in your heart and your life. And he he asks you to guard it, but he also will help you on that journey to seeing wholeness and health in your hearts. So this morning, guard your hearts. It is so important to trust God in this area. You know, if we look at um, the story of Isaac this morning in Genesis 26, if you've got your Bibles, you can turn to Genesis 26 verses 15 to 25 and the journey that he went to of redigging the wells. Genesis 26, 15 to 25. you quite quietly uh, just uh, read the scripture to yourself. Now the Philistines had stopped up the, all the wells which his father's servants had dug in the days of Abraham, his father, and they had filled them with earth. And Abimelech said to Isaac, go away from us for you are much mightier than we. Then Isaac departed from there and pitched his tent in the valley of Gerar and dwelt there. And Isaac dug again the wells of water which they had dug in the days of Abraham. His father by the Philistines had stopped them up after the death of Abraham. He called them by the names which his father had called them. And Isaac's servants dug in the valley and found a well of running water there. But the herdsmen of Gerar quarrelled with Isaac's herdsmen, saying, The water is ours. So he called the name of the well Essek because they quarrelled with him. Then they dug another well and they quarrelled over that one also. So he called its name Sitna. And he moved from there and dug another well and they did not quarrel over it. So he named its name Rehoboth because he said, For now the Lord has made room for us and we shall be fruitful in the land. Then he went up from there to Beersheba and the Lord appeared to him the same night and said, I am the God of your father. Abraham, do not fear, for I am with you. I will bless you and multiply your descendants for my servant Abraham's sake, 
So he built an altar there and called on the name of the Lord and he pitched his tent and there Isaac's servants dug a well. You know, back in those days, because the land was so arid and so dry, wells were so important for survival because everyone needed water to function. Just like you and I need running water in our day and age, they also need water for in their times to survive. You know, for me personally, the thought of not, not being able to drink water and have a shower, daily shower, you know, oh, it just, it just freaks me out because I love to be able to drink water, obviously. So you can imagine back in that time how important it was to have a well because you needed water to survive. You know, in war, it was used as a tactic. If you stopped up the well of an enemy, they weren't able to last long without water. When Abraham dug those wells years ago, not only did it enable him to dwell there and be sustainable, it was seen as a claim of ownership to the land. Rather than recognising this claim of ownership, the Philistines filled up the wells that Abraham had dug. Their desire, listen to this, their desire to overthrow all claims on their land was so strong that they would rather fill in a well which was of great value to the, such a land that was arid that they, than have it challenged. Can you imagine that? Because they didn't want Abraham to have lay claim to this land anymore, they would rather fill in those wells rather than using them for their own benefit because they did not want him to have that claim anymore on their land and have it seen as ownership for himself. So what happened? There was a famine in the land and Isaac found his way back to this place. But because he became so successful and prosperous, Abimelech asked him to leave and didn't want him around anymore. And even he says, you know, because you are mightier than, than we are. Can you imagine the enemy saying to you, because you are mightier than we, we want you to go. So he, he pitches his tent in the valley of Gerar and he re-dug the wells that his father had dug. In the natural, when Isaac re-dug the wells, there was opposition from the herdsmen of the land. You know, they, they quarrelled. There was strife and there was contention and there was hostility. They didn't want Isaac to lay claim to those wells and to that land again. But you know what? The good news is this morning is that he persevered and didn't give up. Despite the contention and despite the strife, he continued on to see those wells redug. You know what this morning is the application for us today from this story. I believe that sometimes there are areas in our life that have been covered for a period of time. It could be a long period of time or it could just be a short period of time. But things in our hearts that we have covered through for, the, you know, for self-protection or if there's things that have happened in our past with our childhood, there's things that may have happened that have now allowed us to cover those areas rather than be exposed and be seen. And it may have been covered just because of life in general circumstances. It could be through disappointment. But, or, and hurts, no matter what it is, sometimes in our lives we cover things for that protection. But that area that has been stopped is no, no longer flowing and is no longer a wellspring of life for who you are and what God has called you to be. And this morning I encourage you to be open to God's leading for restoration and the redigging of that well. The Holy Spirit this morning will lead you and guide you because He loves you so much. Let me encourage you this morning, it is a good thing when the Lord prompts you to do it. I'm not asking you to do it now if that's not the time, but when it's the time, the Holy Spirit will lead you and guide you. And let me encourage you, redigging re those areas is of utmost value and health, and health for your life. You know, healthy emotions this morning are a good thing. Healthy responses this morning are a good thing. Healthy relationships this morning are a good thing. Healthy marriages this morning and all that entails is a good thing because it's been designed by God for you to walk in. It's not designed for you to be, have these half sheltered lives. God never called you to be people that just walk around with your face half covered like if, if we were to see you in the natural. God never called you to be people that walk around with shame in your life. God never called you to be people that walk around with hurts in your life. God never called you to be people that don't have the right responses, who can't stand up for yourself in a healthy and good way. God wants those things that are in you to come out in the name of Jesus. If things have been covered, let me encourage you, it is a good thing to redig those things so that you can have all that God has for your life and expect it, expect it. Good marriages this morning, expect it, expect it. It is your inheritance because of the God that you serve.
serve, good relationships with people around you. Expect it, walk in it because that is what God has for you. Good communication, good decisions, good responses. People of importance and significance. Expect it this morning because it's what God has destined for your heart and your life. Let me, let me just encourage you again, good marriages in the name of Jesus. It is your inheritance this morning to have a good marriage and all that that includes. And good children. Mum and dad are so blessed with great children this morning. They have stand on their covenant rights in that area. Thank the Lord. Trent, might need you soon. You know, this morning, with you operating in health, is so important because we need you. This church needs you. God needs you to be healthy so that we can impact people around us and in this community. God has called us to guard our hearts. God has called us to be people of health in our inner man so that those things that are in us come out and overflow and are a blessing to everyone around us. You know, Isaac was blessed and successful even though he was in Gerar because it was his inheritance. It is what God had called him to be and it's the same for you and I. We are called to be blessed and prosperous and successful this morning because of our God. Redig those wells if you need to. And as I said, go by the leading of the Holy Spirit. Go by the direction of what God has called for your life. And if it's now, then I encourage you, redig the wells because it is of utmost significance for your life and the people around you. It is a good thing. But the other thing I just want to encourage you to with is that, you know, be prepared that there may be some opposition. You know, the enemy won't like it because he doesn't want you to live in freedom this morning. And he doesn't want you to walk in the power and the might of the Holy Spirit. But that this morning is your inheritance, to walk in your freedom and the power of the Holy Spirit. There may be opposition from people around you. We can get so used to people being a certain way and operating out of a certain way that when they change, it can be unsettling us. But let us encourage you this morning that it is a good thing to be healthy. It is a good thing to redig those wells. Don't allow those things to stop you. But like Isaac, keep persisting until you redig those wells that are of your inheritance this morning. Let me encourage you to persist, push through and not give up because this morning it is worth it. Don't listen to the, the lies of the enemy telling you it's not safer. It's safer not to push through, to not stir the pot. You know, don't listen to the lies of the enemy. Keep it a secret. What would the neighbours think? Don't listen to those lies. If God is calling you to redig those areas because it's of your inheritance and your promise, then this morning let me encourage you to do it because it is a good thing and the Holy Spirit will help you with that. So where did this leave Isaac? In Genesis 26, 22 to 25, it says this, And he moved from there and dug another well, and they did not quarrel over it. So he named its name Rehoboth, because he said, For now the Lord has made room for us, and we shall be fruitful in the land. Then he went up from there to Beersheba, and the Lord appeared to him the same night and said, I am the God of your father, Abraham. Do not fear, for I am with you. I will bless you and multiply your descendants for my servant Abraham's sake. So he built an altar there and called on the name of the Lord and he pitched his tent and there Isaac's servants dug a well. You know, the journey of redigging the wells led him back to the land of promise. When Abraham and Isaac came down from the, from the mountain after the sacrifice of the ram, the first place they came to was Beersheba. Isaac knew that God had promised to give him the land that he'd promised his father Abraham. And now he was back at Beersheba and God spoke to him words of blessing and promise. In response, he worshipped God and called on his name. And then he pitched his tent and then dug a well, signifying ocean ownership of the land that God had always intended for his life. He worshipped God first and then he called on his name and then he dug the well. Before redigging the well, if you're not sure what to do, pray to God this morning. Speak to him, call on his name and then he will show you, give you the instructions of what to do because the land is for you. 
Promise is for you. Blessing is for you. Inheritance from God is for you this morning. Redigging the world, just seek God and He will show you and lead you and guide you. This morning, as we just close our eyes, you know, we are called to guard our hearts because they are of value. Guarding something of value this morning. We are called to guard something of worth, which is our hearts. And this morning, I just want to encourage you to be open to the Holy Spirit if there are areas that you need to redig. And as a body of believers here, as a family, as a church, you know, we're going we're to be determined this year to support you in that as you grow and become healthy in your hearts. And we're going to encourage one another in that process. So this morning, as we just come around this time of prayer, Lord God, we just pray and thank you that you have called us to guard our hearts. Lord God, we pray that it's of extreme value to you. So Lord God, let it be extreme value to us. And Lord God, let us protect our hearts by what we allow in so that our hearts can be a wellspring of goodness and life and faith and victory in our speech. And Lord God, we just pray if there's anyone here this morning that there's been an area in their life that they've had covered for a period of time. And Lord God, you are now just tapping on their shoulder gently and saying, you know, it's time. It's time to walk back in the promises that I have for you. It's time to claim all your inheritance that I've already determined for you. I just pray that you will just, Lord God, just lead them and guide them. Lord God, that we'll be there to help them and support them and protect them on this journey. Lord God, you're not someone that just comes to expose us for, to make it seem like it's that everyone will know about. No, it's something that we can do with you and us together. It's not to expose us, it's to bring us into health and restoration and freedom. And we thank you, Lord God, for your grace, your love and your mercy in our hearts and our lives this morning. In the name of Jesus, amen.